voicing your speakers right now, that's me, Sean and Dev from the HQ Boys here with a new episode of That Rules, a weekly podcast where we get together to talk about the stuff that we're obsessed with. This show, as always, is brought to you by Espionage VR. If you go to espionagevr.com and use code HQ15, you can get a cool shirt like I'm rocking right now, Dark Souls 3, except the site is down this week. Forgot that when I started the ad because Hosian is revamping everything. So just get ready. Just think about it. Think about what you would want to buy from Hosian. Espionagevr.com. That's code HQ15. And as always, this show, I guess not as always, but, the, but maybe the most important you, one this usually, week. Usually. Usually it is. This show is brought to you by Manscaped. I think this is backwards. Oops. No. You it looks. Uh, I think it's backwards, right? It looks forwards to me. I think my, my camera's backwards, but yours is facing forward. Oh, okay. Uh, if you go to manscaped.com slash HQ with no vowels and use code HQ20, you can get the Manscaped Refined Cologne. And like I posted on Instagram today, let's be real. No gamer setup is complete without the Manscaped Refined Cologne. Sure, you got the key light. You got the microphone. You got the stream deck. But you probably smell. You've been gaming all day. Losing so many games of Warzone to cheaters, hackers is not mm. fair. The only way to get the stench off you is with a little Manscaped Refined Cologne. And then, if you want to make yourself even better, you can grab yourself the perfect package 3.0. Give yourself a little bzz, bzz downstairs. Put mm. some deodorant on your balls. Manscaped has you covered when it comes to your pubes and your scent. So please, help us help you. Go to manscaped.com slash HQ with no vowels. Use code HQ20 to get yourself 20% off and free shipping. And as always, thank you, Elgato, for giving us the gear we need to make great stuff for you. Please welcome my new revered guest, Devin Miller. Unfortunately, Nick got sick. I, w- w- I woke up, went downstairs. It looked like he got hit by a truck. <laughs> he was like really not feeling well. So I said, hey, why don't you take the day off? We got Dev. Um, so Dev, how are you? Hey, I'm doing well. I, uh, you know, it's Monday. I'm uh, back in the workforce for this week, three day week. So I got a four day week, another four day weekend coming up. Just came off a four day weekend. Mm. So yeah, that uh, it's been smooth sailing for the end of the year, at least. Dude, you saying regard. you saying a Monday made me realize I forgot the most important part of the intro. It's it's Nick and Sean Thomas taking the suck, taking out, the of suck out of your Monday. Oh yeah. man, I'm not cut out for this shit. And you bro. know what? And you know what? If you're not watching us live, we're taking the suck out of whatever day we upload or whatever day you watch it. Yeah. True yeah. enough. Um, so Dev, I, I don't know, I don't know how familiar you are with the format of the show, mm-hmm. but we've got there's a bunch of different segments. The main, the main meat and potatoes is you come with something that you're obsessed with. Maybe you give a little history on it, you explain it. But before that, sometimes we do a that sucks. Just okay. something, just something that blows. Do you have okay, anything okay. That, that sucks that you want to air I'm out your grievances? Some, I'm trying to air my grievances, but I've like I've been having like a decent time lately. <laughs> So I'm like trying to think of shit that's been like going particularly bad. Um, uh, yeah, you know what? Actually, you, you know what sucks is that. So I'm trying to avoid Amazon as much as I can. Mm-hmm. You know, it just, you know, I've been doing a pretty good job. I'll do like a little knickknacks here and there of like super weird shit that I'll buy off of there. But generally, mm-hmm. I'll like either buy it somewhere else or I'll like my Oculus Quest I bought off Oculus website, so on and so forth. Yeah. But I came onto the Instacart deal. Hmm. Um, cause it was like 10 cents for a month of Instacart. And I was like, hell yeah, I can use Instacart. I don't have to use Amazon fresh. Hmm. Unfortunately, Instacart shit is like more expensive for you, which is from. food for less. Uh, see, we only do Aldi and Walmart and it's pretty cheap. Okay. Yeah. But I like, I did. And I, so I did like, I kind of did a list. I did a comparison list and like, I'm obviously not in like, I'm also not in the best area. So like food for less around here is like when I go in there, it's pretty fucking cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, Amazon fresh ended up coming out on top, which I was like, Oh, you know, I got it. And I already, and I already have Amazon prime. So it's like kind of already in there. So, I mean, I, I used Instacart the other day. I, I will say the advantage of Instacart is that I can get it pretty much any time. Whereas yeah. Amazon, I usually got to wait a day or so. Mm-hmm. So there's that advantage, but yeah, it, it, that sucks. Yeah. It was funny that you can get a uh, Costco on Instacart and how he's like, yo, this is the cheat code. You just go to Costco on Instacart. No, those yeah, prices yeah. are jacked up. Oh, yeah. yeah. They are. Yeah. It's like a different universe over there. Um, my that sucks this week is just that Nick is sick. I know that he really likes doing the show, so I feel bad that he has to. He's he's getting cucked. <laughs> he's that is in the bum. chat watching watching you do his show. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be sick, especially now. Yeah. You don't know what you have. I know he was he's really worried he had COVID, but 
I mean, the only person that could have gave us COVID is Big Nick, and he seems pretty healthy. Um, one second, my cat is scratching at my door. So you're ah, the door for a sec. The door is closed, so Sean can't keep his door closed because Simba will claw at the door. So, you know, an unfortunate side effect. But yeah, there and there he is. He's coming in. He's coming in. Yep, and he's gonna hop on the bed. So yeah, I don't know. It's been a it's been a pretty good wrap up for my year. So I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to look on the bright side. So. Um, so Dev, as as the guest of honor, do you want to start today or do you want me to go so you can get warmed up? I think I'll have you go and then I can I'll get the flow, I'll get my cadence in. Dude, there's no way this cat just scratched my door to get in and now he's trying to get out. No way, dude. You're a prisoner. Okay. My mine is actually something I'd want to talk about for weeks. I think it was actually one of the very first topics I wrote down on my phone. Um, and I guess at large, the topic is like indie J-pop, like indie Japanese pop music. Um, there's this artist that I've been listening to ever since I found out about him on TikTok named Vondi, who I'm like obsessed with. He is a 20 year old kid, indie kid. He produces his own music. He like plays the guitar. He raps, he sings, um, and he even helps like direct his own videos. And he has a couple of like the coolest songs I've ever heard. If you're listening, the first song you should go check out is Life Hack. The video is really pretty. The song is really catchy. And uh, I, I think that's like the biggest hook. Like it'll get you, it'll get you ready to listen to some more. But the other song by him that just bangs is a song called Tokyo Flash. And I, I'll say that Vondi was kind of like my gateway drug into listening to more of this kind of music. I would even say maybe Vondi was almost in a way my gateway drug and listening to K-pop in a way. Hmm. Um, this this kid is like really cool, but he's also like super low key. Like he doesn't have a Wikipedia page. You like can't really find anything out about him apart from like a couple interviews. Um, he's and he like is really new. Like I think he put out Tokyo Flash in 2019. So he's like super, super fresh. The cat, dude, Simba, mm -hmm. bro, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. The joys of, of podcasting from home. Um, but uh, I, I like, I really can't say enough positive stuff about him. And because I started listening to him, let me tell you, this is the YouTube algorithm. It's just fucking insane because I started listening to Vondi and it's like, oh, do you want to listen to this girl called Eerie? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Sure. And then just from there on, it, I have I actually have a playlist. I should pull it up. Wow. I have a playlist on my YouTube just called Japanese music, which is like all these different songs. And then I got this one playlist called like Japanese music to chill to. It's it's like it's kind of like a play on like, you know, fucking lo-fi, lo-fi lo beats. beats. And uh, there's just so many fucking bangers. And that got me listening to, you know, the season four theme song for my hero academia have you watched that mm -mm, i've only watched the first season of that well crazy um yeah season four has like this it's a song that's like really fucking good and i heard it when i was in japan and i was like whoa um and i was listening to you know lisa the woman who does the demon slayer theme song also did the sword Art online season one ending mm -hmm. song dude it was just like it was such like a, a nice little uh gateway drug but uh what about you deb is there any sort of like international music that you really fuck with um other than like really other than like i mean i would say the thing i'm listening to most is like any like uk rap or grime and shit mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. probably like my biggest like literally my favorite my actual favorite album of the year is h is is polaris by h oh, that's okay. like hands down my favorite album of the year and a few years ago my favorite album of the year was konnichiwa by skepta mm -hmm. so um, I mean, but, uh, I would say, I mean, I was, I don't, I, I don't listen to much in terms of K-pop really. The only K-pop I listen to is BTS and like, mm. like my ex put me onto that like a few years ago. So that's really all, like the only thing I really been on in, in that regard. Um, and then I listen to like J-pop stuff from animes and whatnot. Like, uh, mm. probably my, maybe my, my favorite J-pop band was from an anime, uh, Sorotope Sakana, which they actually broke up a couple months ago. Um, they wow. did the intro song for High Score Girl, which oh. came out a, which came out a few years ago. That song's good. Yeah, so that's really that's really in terms of that. I guess that that would be my my international breadth at least. So. 
Yeah, I guess I guess I have Brendan to thank for getting me into um, UK stuff. Like I hadn't really mm. listened to it at all, and then you know he was like heavy into like Stormzy yeah. and Chip okay. and all that. Um, and now I would say Chip is probably like my favorite rapper. So, mm. but what's weird? I, I guess I don't really think about that as like super international, just because they speak English. That's fair. Like, yeah, yeah. like I I understand like one out of every a hundred words in this like Bonnie mm. song, but. They're just so good. If you're uh, if you're a listener who is active in our Discord, I'll actually post in the um, in the what I'm listening to channel, and I'll post some links if you're interested. But I I really think that if if you're gonna check out anything, check out Life Hack by Vondi. I just think the song rules so hard, and there's just something about his like ah, just the way he sings is so fucking good. And the video for Tokyo Flash, you know, obviously I'm a fucking music video guy so i'm like deeply obsessed with that shit but the music video is so cool he's like his face is all blurry and he's like spinning walking through tokyo um owie listens to like a lot of american music Mm -hmm. like she listens to like like she likes travis scott and drake and she listens like ed sheeran but she got me like heavy into twice and twice is probably like probably like the biggest like j-pop k-pop group and uh there's actually there's this app that we downloaded it's called bubble this is crazy so i think um that k-pop group the boy band exo did it um it's an app where you basically pay a monthly subscription to like talk to your favorite idol um (laughs) but the way that jyp does it the label that, that they're assigned to um you're basically in a group chat with them and it's like on their end they're in a group chat with like a thousand people or whatever mm. and they're just like typing into the void <laughs> so you're basically like a voyeur into like <laughs> the group chat i have been really 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 impressed this is like this is vaguely related um when i was working with raja on her new record uh we were talking about like different ways to promote it and the thing that i love that all these k-pop groups do is they get like a psychotic amount of mileage out of one song like uh, mm-hmm. this group itsy has a song not shy it's like their big new song they have i think at least five so okay so i should back up the way that they like produce these videos is or these songs is they do the song then they do the music video and in the music video it's just like a bunch of different dance scenes so then they'll put out the performance video which is just all those dance scenes stitched together with like none of the story b-roll or whatever then they do the dance practices so this is shot back at like the office dance room and there are all these dances but with different constraints so like do the song at different speeds you have to do your like somebody else's role in the group you have to wear a silly outfit and so like this one song just gets millions and millions and millions of spins based on all these video views and i was talking to raja i was like yeah like we've been doing it wrong for so long because I feel like the traditional way in America, maybe like pre TikTok, was to just like shoot a music video and then you put a music video out and then you put out like maybe the BTS of the video and then yeah. like that's it. But these groups, like they put out because like all these artists have like some of those getting into trash. All these groups have like one or, you know, maybe they have like a discography of like 10 songs, but each song gets like played like a fucking album because they put out so much shit. So that has been super inspiring to me to look at. And I just think that there's a lot like obviously the music is one thing, but I think that the marketing of all these artists is just like so insane. And I feel like it's a really, really interesting way, maybe for indie artists who don't want to spend a ton of money to look at how to get more play out of one song because for me that was always like a really sad thing is you would spend like three thousand dollars on a music video and then like that was it like that music video was only ever gonna do and like people will get tired of seeing you post the same thing over and over again you know um and you know it's funny you bring up the uk too because when i was like heavy into the uk i followed stormzy's videographer on twitter And that dude just shot like every fucking video under the sun. He was shooting shit for Chip. He was shooting shit for Stormzy. He was shooting shit for Crept and Conan. And I just, I I feel like maybe this is like too hipster to say, but I I feel like the way that like the American mainstream music industry makes music and like the content around it is just so fucking boring. Like everywhere Mm -hmm. else is like, maybe because like it is so big and like everybody looks to America in terms of that, that they don't have to like, 
go too hard but like i thought it was so interesting how like the uk like all those videos felt like not like shitty quality but like organic like they felt like it felt like i like i knew the guy who made it you know what i mean and all I these kids also you go i'm oh, sorry i think i think it was also when you have you know if you have a an artist that is maybe a bit smaller um and they're doing more videos obviously they have to be a bit more low budget budget right which yeah. can you know those directors probably be on the lower end as well can like will maybe connect with more people connect with more people on like the lower end like you felt like you know you follow around like Stormzy's videographer and whatnot but if he you know if he's like a smaller low, lower budget in the grand scheme of things you know mm -hmm. um he maybe has less followers and maybe interact a little bit more in that regard yeah. too oh for sure like i don't know dude so so much of that shit i just feel like like even the way that like um you know i've obviously shot music videos for for big labels and they just like they just like shit the video out and then like they vanish you know <laughs> like I, I think it's really cool how everybody is doing it internationally um but that was mine the real thing there above all else if you don't want to listen to it twice i get it it's not for everybody but please go check out life hack by bondi that song is really good and if you want any other suggestions you can join our discord and i'll tell you more but deb i'm really interested to know what your all right yours i will finish up i'll finish up your last one because actually there is this group that i've been listening to recently and i like i don't know why i didn't think about it um it's a group called banda los chinos from argentina okay. actually okay. really cool shit so um it's like super relaxing but it's very interesting because uh i like listened to them like a couple started listening to them like a couple weeks ago and then they i was like kind of put on to like some of their records and shit like that and i guess they have this like really low number production of their vinyl that their shit goes for like thousands and thousands of dollars, even though they're like a relatively new band. Wow. Um, definitely interesting. But yeah, the music is sick. They're from Argentina. So I understand like every fifth word or so. My Spanish isn't, isn't great, but you know, I, I pick shit out every now and then. I also, I feel like in a way, listening to music in a language that you don't understand makes it really easy to work to because yeah. you don't have to like be concerned with what they're saying it. yeah yeah exactly exactly, exactly. No, i feel that um dude, so, so i'm excited tell me what yours is this is what has been ruling one of the things that have been really rules lately in my life are yep. sweatsuits okay let's go fucking love so right now i'm actually sorry audio listeners but for my video my video bros a lot of people i'm actually wearing a sweatsuit right now from let's this go. company called lavender and nice. It's just so sick because um, you get a sweatsuit, you know, you get one you really like, and you can rock it with a lot of like all you have to do, you just have to put the sweatsuit on and, and like your favorite pair of shoes, and you mm. know maybe you wear like a hat or something like that, but your outfit's pretty much ready to go. Mm. Like you're ready to go. It's comfy. You can dress it kind of up and down as you like. Like I could put a coat over this or some shit and be you know. But, Dude, speaking yeah. speaking of all the international music shit, when I was like heavy into grime, I was like, "Yo, maybe I'll start buying track suits." Track suits. <laughs> <laughs> these guys, all these guys look fucking sick in track suits. Well, you know, yeah, funny, this yeah. this isn't even the first like like sweatsuit thing you've been on because when we were shooting the MTV Cribs video, which is still coming out by the way, um, you you had kind of a sweatsuit going on. You were in the sweatpants. With a mm. big hoodie, and I was like, "Man, Dev's got it all figured out." Honestly, yeah. Because so, so, but like, you know, I have I have this full sweatsuit. Um, I have another sweatsuit from this local brand called Big Bud Press, and so those are like, you know, obviously matching top and bottom. But I also just have a bunch of black sweatpants and a bunch of black hoodies, and that's mm. pretty much a sweatsuit. And you know, you can kind of. Yeah. So I have I have options for pretty much every day of the week right now. But um, I'm definitely looking into buying more more uh actual sweatsuits um as you know it's a bit cool you know i'm trying to get my mileage out of it before summertime hits again see that's a really mm -hmm. good point something i've been dealing with mentally is i feel like i wear only wear sweatpants like all fucking day long every day <laughs> because you know it, no one's leaving their house so i feel like whenever i go outside i need to put pants on okay okay just just on some like uh, I owe it to myself. Okay, <laughs> to wear okay. to wear some real clothes, you know. I um, kind of was like uh, the other day. Oh yeah, when I went to, when I went to your house the other day for, uh, for Christmas, I was. I mean, I was wearing like 
I had my in the house sweatpants, mm-hmm. and then I switched to a sweat to my going out sweatsuit. So yeah, I see, think if you can differentiate them that way, you'll feel a little less bad. Well, you want to know? It's funny. We actually know people who run like I don't want to say sweatsuit companies, but uh, you know, apparel businesses who like the sweatpants shit just like went crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like because like, everyone, everyone's inside. Yeah, everyone's just trying to. Everyone's just trying to be comfy. You know. Dude, and I I think it's the fucking move. Do you have any sweatsuits that you would recommend to people? Hmm. So, uh, I mean, I this one this one is a bit heavier. Okay. Um. So I would say, I mean, like I said, if you have like if you, if you have a comfy pair of like black sweatpants and a hoodie, like wear that, and then wear your favorite pair of like Air Maxes or something with it. You mm-hmm. know, make sure you know make sure it's clean, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. This one is a little heavy. Uh, the, my big bud press one is is like lighter. It's a much lighter material, so mm-hmm. could do you a little better on maybe some of the warmer, warmer California days. Um, mm-hmm. This one's definitely like a like a uh, a heavy a heavy boy. Um, I'm sweating mm-hmm. a little bit in it, but <laughs> luckily I got deodorant on, so I don't smell. So, dude, but yeah, not nah, what's up? Did we, did we talk about this last night? Did huh. we talk about? I was reading it. La- I was reading about it last night. Do you know? Do you know that East Asians don't have the gene? Oh yeah, yeah, they don't have the 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 smelly the, gene, for... the body odor gene. Yeah, what the fuck is that, man? I know that's that's the money saver, dude. So okay, so before I went to Japan, somebody was like, "Hey, just so you know, you should bring your own deodorant because if you forget it, you're not gonna find any there." And I was like, "What do you mean? <laughs> Everyone just smells bad all the time?" And I went there. Sure enough, quite the opposite. Sure enough, couldn't get deodorant, and I was talking to Owie, and she's like, "You wear deodorant every day," and I was like, "Uh huh," because I'm gonna smell so fucking bad if I don't. Mm. And I was seeing a girl tweet about how I actually forget what she was tweeting about, but then I saw her say like, "I don't have the a the AC fifty five gene or whatever mm. that makes body odor," and I was like, "Excuse me," and I googled nice. it because you know I've been living with Owie for almost a year now. She's never smelled bad once. And I'm mm. like, how is this? How is this reality? Is there any, do you, do you know the science behind it? Is there any downside to not having it? I, I don't know. I, I, I would think not. It might just be, a, it might just be a regional thing because of like climate and whatnot, to be honest. Um, Dude, give me that gene. Yeah. Can I, can I get it? And here's the downside. If I have a kid, God, God forbid. But let's say I have a kid with Owie. Does that a that, that kid's got a 50-50 flip? That's unlucky. Yeah. Or lucky, depending on how you look at it. Have you, you ever know? have you this is this is way more this is way more HQ cast than that rules, but fuck it, we're here now. Fuck have it. you ever have you have you inherited a gene from a parent and you're like, fuck you for giving me that one? You knew you had it and you gave it to me. Because I've That's got two a- from my dad. Wow, I haven't. Hmm. Maybe I haven't done the research, but I haven't. I haven't. No negative things because my narcolepsy is not hereditary. So, mm. yeah, my, I don't know. my dad gave me two. Okay, for okay, uh, let me shout out my dad. He did give me incredibly thick hair, so thank you for that. Appreciate you. But what all? What he also did. My dad. I used to remember. I, I've told this story before, but my dad. I used to have this uh, Travis Barker famous stars and straps hoodie. And um, or sorry, hat, a flex fit hat. And my dad went out. Uh, I remember he would go out and get on the lawnmower. We had like a riding lawnmower and he would just fucking drive around on that MF or come back in sweating like a stuck pig. And I'm like, man, how did he get so sweaty? And uh, that is like my curse. Like mm. I get if it is like the slightest bit hot, I'm just drenched. Wow. Like when I, when I would wear like a backpack walking around college, just be soaking. My back mm. soaked. Misery. And the other thing my dad did, this doesn't affect me anymore, as you see, I'm a, I'm a handsome young man, but when I was a kid, I had horrible acne. And that was something my dad gave to me. And I was like, hey, that's whack of you. And now I'm thinking about what will I give to my kid? The sweating disease. The, the sweating disease. The yeah. sweating disease. And and what if I? What if he doesn't look out? Like, it would be great if you got the sweating disease from me and the no, no smell gene from Maui. That would be nice. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But... You know, un unlucky flip. He's gonna get. He's gonna just be me. It'd be a good, you know, good mix, maybe. 
just a sweaty, not smelly pig. Just a slip, <laughs> just a slippery boy, not a smelly boy. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So normally this is, this is kind of a kind of a quick show, but I but well actually, hang on, let, let me look at my notes real quick. Okay, I've right, got one. Got? Got? I've, I've right. got one. What do you got? What do you got? I want to talk about Big Sean. Okay. I, growing up, hated Big Sean. Hmm. I didn't hate Big Sean. I thought he was, like, whack. And, okay, okay. and I remember seeing a tweet. I was probably, like, 16. I remember seeing a tweet that was like, what does Big Sean know about Kanye? <laughs> like, why does he get to keep putting out records? <laughs> and, <laughs> and I really didn't like Big Sean for the longest time. And then that record, I Decided, came out. Hmm. And that record is like really fucking good. Have you listened to it? No, I, is it, how new is it? Uh, it no, nah, it's, it's not, it's not new. It's like, I guess like 2017, I want to say. Yep. 2017, February 3rd. So this record came out, uh, obviously maybe somebody out there doesn't know big Sean is from Detroit and it came out like the week Nick and I went to, um, Detroit to shoot a music video. So we're, you know, we're riding around, we're listening to only Eminem and big Sean in Detroit. And, uh, and the record is like really fucking good. Um, I, I don't really know why, but like that bounce back song is really good. Jump out oh, the window yeah, is yeah. really good. That moves song, I got the moves. We're yeah. going to get DMC. That, no, that song. Yeah. That song is dope. Yeah. I mean, he, I, I've, I guess I, did, I never really gave him like a deep dive, but I've always like, and generally enjoyed his singles and whatnot. Uh, he had this, so really that's the thing. His singles yeah. are catchy, but the records were like, kind of trash uh but he had this really cool song with um i don't even i think it might have just been an actual single i don't know if it was on a record but it's called living single with chance the rapper and jeremiah who's like mm, mm. jeremiah's like one of my top r&b dudes like maybe, how sad were you when he got covid i know it's too tragic honestly but tragic. I, I think he's good now right yeah, I, I, yeah, I think we would have heard about it if it got worse. But yeah, yeah, that song was like really fucking cool. So yeah, he just comes out with like cool shit every now and then. But yeah, I don't, I don't really give the albums a chance. Uh, so you should listen to I Decided. And the okay. reason that I wanted to talk about him was he actually put out a new record um, called Detroit Two, and it's also like pretty good. Now he does. Mm-hmm. I, I think Big Sean is like maybe on some like Hotep shit. You have to listen mm-hmm. to it. Okay. Because- Cause he talks about, I don't know. He talks about, he, he got some powers in the 21st. That's all I can say. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know? um, but the record is like actually pretty fucking good. And you know, there have been a couple artists in the last, in the last couple of years that growing up, I like really fucking hated for like arbitrary reasons. Cause you're like a, a kid and you have like dumb opinions and the probably the biggest thing the biggest the biggest change for me was mac miller i don't know how you feel about mac miller Hmm. but i didn't really like mac miller at all growing up because he was part of that wave of people that was just like shitty white weed rappers you know like Mm, yeah yeah. fucking like asher roth and whatever Uh, um bad timing yeah it just wasn't great but and like and mac miller is like the same age as me and nick so we were like you know fucking like jealous or whatever but when he came out with that record swimming, like the month before he died or whatever, that record was actually really good. And it came mm-hmm. out at the same time as Astro World, I think. And I think it came out at the same time as another album. And I like actually liked swimming the most out of them. So mm-hmm. I, I want to say that, like Big Sean and Mac Miller were probably part of that group. And to maybe my personal biggest surprise, Sadistic, uh, this kid I grew up, he he's older than me but i grew up making music and people used to always compare me to him because we were both like two sad white dudes rapping about music and um or rapping about rap about being sad and uh people were like oh you sound just like sadistic and i was like nah fuck that guy i don't sound anything like him and then i wound up shooting videos for him and he's actually a really cool <laughs> guy and i like his music so <laughs> yeah it seems like super dope so have you had any any artists like that where you just like completely didn't like some people on some like no fucking reason shit and now you think they're cool? I did that honestly with a lot of like hardcore shit. Oh, really? Yeah, I was always like, yeah, like this band probably sucks because a bunch of people like them and kind of like cool guy shit, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think like, yeah, I'm, try- I'm trying to think if I did anything. Like, like, not with, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think I, like, will, I will say I with that, but I will say yeah. a big reason I didn't like Mac Miller was because of the kind of people who liked him. 
that's why I didn't like Mac. That's also why I didn't like Mac Miller. And I like never really gave it a chance like you until swimming. Mm -hmm. Um, I did go back and I was like, okay, I actually don't really care about any of his other shit. So mm. I kind of feel vindicated, <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, it was kind of like on the other shit. Whereas like now I like, I think you have to like, I'll give shit a chance, like right at the front. Mm. Then I'll be mm. like, I'll be like, I got time to listen to this. So let's just mm. like we'll check it out. And if I don't like it, I'll like, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll say, I'll come out and say it. K-pop was a huge thing for me in that regard. Like I didn't uh. listen to it at all because and okay, so here's I'll t- I'll tell like a maybe a f- an ignorant story. When I, I think I, I told in the HQ cast, but when I was at Hundred Thieves, a bunch of people went to see Blackpink, and it was like all like the Korean employees and like players and the team. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. You guys are like fucking dumb. And then I was driving with Owie, and Blackpink came on the radio, and un- unbeknownst to me, I was like, who is this? And now he's like, oh, it's cool. Blackpink. And I was like, this actually rules. And we yeah. were talking with with Kesh about it, and Kesh was like maybe you were in the call. I was, it was when I found the music video and he was like, okay, let's like, you guys think they're hot, but like, you don't, you don't really like the song. And I was like, I do. It, I heard the song before I saw the girls. Like yeah. it's a good song. <laughs> um, and I, and I've been that way. Basically. I, I think I just didn't like K-pop for fucking forever arbitrarily. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, ah, it's basically all I listen to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think I also did that um, maybe with like like poppy shit. Usually I'll do that with like, I'll be like, I don't really care to listen to this. Like, I definitely like never really gave Ariana Grande a chance until Dangerous mm. Woman came out. And that's like, mm. that's a mm. fucking banger of a record. Yeah. That's um, good. I didn't really, I think because I always enjoyed J-pop, not that I brushed off K-pop, but I never like, I never like got into it, but I never like brushed it off either. Um, mm. So then when I did hear like BTS and shit, I was like, wow, this is like so fucking cool. And then like they did that song with Juice World, and I was like hooked. Mm. I was like, holy well, fucking shit. I, I think that K-pop also suffers from that like shit people like this thing. You know, mm. it's like it's like I, I, I call it the South Park effect or like the family oh, guy effect, you or know, the Rick it's and like Morty effect. The Rick and Morty effect. It's yeah. like it's like it's like you don't know if you don't know a cool person that likes it then it sucks. So I'm hoping, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping maybe I can be that cool person. I'll call myself <laughs> a cool person for now. Maybe somebody really wants to like K-pop and I'm like, Oh, yeah. and, and they're like, Oh, Sean's pretty cool. So maybe like, it's it okay. To like, like K-pop. Yeah. Not just like some, some randos. I don't know. And shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah dude. The Oh my God. So many <laughs> shitty people who like South Park and family guy, all my former favorite things. And then I got to stop liking it. I know Rick and Morty was really a devastating one because like, you just see people like acting like uh, animals. Yeah. Like, Give oh me this as one dress. Oh my God. That? And it's like, dude, and I like, I watched, I think I, I'm pretty sure I watched the whole first season. I was like, the show's fucking bangs, but yeah, I can't be, as, I can't be associated with it. You know what? I'll, I'll air myself out. Cause I know this show's got kind of mixed reviews. Big mouth. I love big mouth. I, I think love it's big really mouth. Funny. I but, like but, big uh, mouth. But so many people on the internet fucking hate it, probably because some fucking dudes are being like, I'm fucking 40. So (laughs) I think so. A lot of the hate that I see coming from it is like it is like it's kids. Yeah, that's fair. Like, which is like, honestly, kind of. (laughs) okay. it's kind of fair. Okay, that's fair. But you know what I was you know, I was doing when I was fucking 13. The same shit and talking about boobs. Yeah, and I'm and I'm twenty, almost twenty seven now. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed, you know. So yeah, I think yeah, people need to fucking get over it, get with the times. Yeah, no, that was yeah. I can definitely Big Mouth is cool because I can relate to it in that way, much like I could relate to the shit that happened in like Super Bad. Mm, mm, Super Bad mm. was a little over the top, but generally, like mm. you can kind of get into it. Yeah, you know, and there's nothing, there's nothing worse than seeing the thing that you love being taken over by people mm. that suck and this is probably like a larger conversation about like gentrification and uh cultural appropriation <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's, it, it's kind of parallel you know what i mean it's like it's like this thing gets taken over by like shitty people who don't really know maybe like what's going on with it and yeah. then they now you don't want to be associated with it anymore yeah I got, you know there's it's like it, it's just like how do you how, what do you do in that regard? It's like, do you just give up on the thing that you love? Yeah. Cause it's like, I, you know, I, 
Because I don't want to be like, yo, I love Rick and Morty. And then some person who doesn't know me think yeah. that I was think that I went into a McDonald's and jumped on a counter and yelled, re I'm Pickle Rick. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't need that. And my sphere of influence is not large enough for them to think otherwise, to be honest. Yeah. Like if Drake was like, I like Rick and Morty, but Drake already has that image. Yeah. I don't have that. I don't have that luxury. Well, so Drake was another interesting one where when as soon as Drake came out, I don't know what it was. I was hooked. I was like, best mm. I ever had. Like, I was hooked. <laughs> I was working at Rite Aid, listening to Thank Me Later. And uh, and I remember Fitz, like, shitting on me. Fitz me like, he like, fucking Drake. And then uh, what, al- what album came out? Um, the one that came out in February. It was snowing, 2015. Uh, if you're reading this. And Fitz yeah, yeah. was like, Fitz was like, oh, this like, album's, like, really good. And I was like... <laughs> fuck you that's right that's right i told dude, you it was good dude uh if you're reading this was dude i like can visualize that time in my life Same. because i was working at the apple store and that's pretty much the only thing i would listen to uh in the gr mm. and everyone loved it except for this one fucking dude but this is also <laughs> a dude who likes south park so you know again my exactly <laughs> but yeah, and then, like, so there was, like, the point in my life where all I was listening to in the GR was If You're Reading This, and then it shifted to all I was listening to in the GR was fucking, um, I forget the album. The next one. The studio um, one. Uh, <laughs> where he's take, sitting on the fucking the space s- needle. S- fuck. Dude, views what is it? Six. Views from the six. Views, views from, from the six. six. Yeah. Um, views. Yeah. Views. Um. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And dude, now I'm just trying to think about like, man, have I been the guy that's gotten into something that somebody loves no. and, and, now, <laughs> and now they can't like it anymore? Now they fucking hate it. I hope not. I don't think so. Dude, we're too cool. We're too cool for that. That's a, okay, thank you. And I feel, I feel much better knowing that. Um, okay, so before we wrap the show out, we, we always give some honorary mentions. To some things that are really cool that we like, we want to shout them out, but maybe not enough for a whole topic. Hmm. We call it that rules too. Okay. Is there anything, anything that you like that you want to talk about, dude? Please, you can't see it on the camera. My cat, he wants to get I, out so bad. He, want out so he wants bad. to get out so fucking bad. I wish you could um, see him. Anyway, you, 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 you tell her that rules too. While I let Simba out of it. I'll literally. So I already talked about it on the cast. So they're two really cool clothing companies. Um. Let me try and find let me try and find their Instagrams for you so that I can give you the uh so one of them, the sweatsuit that I'm wearing, uh the company's called Lavender, just really fucking cool company. Their Instagram is lavender.xyz. And then another company, which I like, I have a sweatsuit from them. I also have this like really cool um jumpsuit from, and they were kind enough to let me model for them last week. Uh mm-hmm. they're called Big Bud, Big Bud Press, like big bud like you're smoking and press like i don't know press down your toes but yeah they're really cool they're based out of um they're based out of echo park uh lavender is based out of just somewhere in la i forgot where uh i think he said he's like east la or something like that but yeah those are just like really two two really cool things i want to shout out what was the first one sorry lavender lavender um so mine it's a k-pop group (laughs) surprise surprise this is like all i get obsessed with now is music but i'm happy because you know what i kind of lost my my spark uh, hmm. for music in a way, like the last couple of years, there hmm. was a run. Now, I wish that I wish not, not that you don't have an opinion on this. I wish Nick was here though. Cause we talked about it when we like 2017, 2018, when we first moved to LA, there was just like no good fucking music coming out. It's like every album that came out was like kind of disappointing. <laughs> just wasn't good at all. That was when I really got into grime actually. Um, and I kind of felt the same way recently. There've been some albums that I've liked, but k-pop it just i feel like in a way because there's such a backlog of stuff that i don't know it felt mm, like you can... it, it feels like a new album comes out every week because i find a new thing that i like and uh there's this group called itsy that i really fucking love they're put out by the same label that puts out twice um and i would say that they're so jyp is the label that does twice yg is the label that does blackpink i would say that itsy feels like jyp's blackpink like they have they're like really edgy they're very cool the music is like maybe a little more like hip-hop focused than like twice which is like a lot of pop stuff um 
and I've just been doing like a YouTube deep dive. I've completely devastated my YouTube search history and the HQ Boys YouTube search history. It's like <laughs> literally only K-pop videos. My bad, y'all. Um, but if you if I haven't given you enough music to check out, check out Itzy Not Shy. It's just a fucking banger. And um, that's basically it. That's my That Rules too. I just love Itzy now. Yeah, um, I'm, uh, I'm going to do a quick That Rules 3. Um, okay. uh, it's just two words, ray tracing. I've, yeah, I feel like you could do a whole of that rules on Rachel. Like, <laughs> maybe one of these days. Um, well, everybody, thank you so much for coming to this special episode of That Rules 20. This is a 20th episode. Whoa. And, and Nick, Nick wasn't even here for the it. Big 2 0. But, but now, as longtime listeners of the show will know, that means next episode, we need to do. Uh, did you know that we did this on episode 11, Dev, or episode 10? We did the, we ranked our last 10 episodes. Yeah. <laughs> So we're going to do that next week. So look out for that. And uh, in next week's episode, actually, I'll have a very special announcement. So uh, if you like what you're hearing, you can go to manscaped.com slash HQ and use code HQ20 to get yourself some Manscaped refined cologne. It's the best way to support the show. Manscaped has been a longtime partner of ours. And uh, I know that a lot of you guys out there have already got pretty much the whole package of them. But if you like the way your nuts smell, why not put that scent on your chest? with the Manscaped Refined Cologne. And if you want to smell like each of the HQ boys, you can go to manscaped.com slash HQ and use code HQ20 to get yourself 20% off some of the best products online. Hell yeah. You can also go to espionagevr.com and use code HQ15 to get yourself some of the best gaming shirts. You want to get a cool Dark Souls shirt. You want to get a cool Resident Evil shirt. You want to get yourself a cool... What else has he got? Silent Hill, Metal Gear, Gran Turismo, Manhunt, Def Jam, Fight for New York. If you don't want to wear a fucking Pac-Man shirt from Target, get yourself right. Go to espionagevr.com. Use code HQ15. And as always, thank you, Delgado, for giving us the gear we need to make great stuff for you. We'll see you guys Wednesday for the HQ cast. Peace. Peace.